My name is Kelsey Clements, and it is my pleasure today to introduce our Senior Construction Manager, Mr. Jeff Fisher. Thank you, Kelsey. Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. And um, I'd like to focus my talk on one area of our work, specifically drop structures. And in drop structures, there's um, grouted boulder drop structures with sheep pile cutoff walls. And that's the area I'd like to focus on this morning. And um, I want to first explain the sheep pile cutoff wall. We have a drop structure where the water is going over it. We drive sheep pile, a, a wall of steel around or in front of the drop structure to keep the water from going under the drop structure. So when I refer to um, sheet pile cutoff walls, that's the wall of steel I'm referring to. It's also called a seepage wall. It can be made out of concrete, but I'm focusing on sheet pile this morning. Um, I'll talk about four projects, uh, two of them newer ones, two of them older projects, and all of these have been funded under the maintenance program at Mile High. Um, I wanna start with the first project um, I brought to this audience a couple, two years ago, it's Stro Gulch. It was in the town of Parker. Uh, Rick Dennett was our main guy there. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Lowen Engineering, Daniel Lowen was the, uh, did all the design work on it, um, did a great job. ERO did the permitting, left hand excavating, did all the work, the heavy lifting. That was uh, Jake Pitcher and um, Thomas Silman. And Arrowhead Landscaping made it all look green. Um, I brought this project two years to you ago, we just were looking at the problems, and if you see in the slide, the disintegrating boulders was the main issue that we were looking at at the time, and uh, we have specifications for granite boulders. This is not, and this is what happened over time in this condition. Um, as we drone the project, this is the upstream drop structure, there's three drop structures. Um, we noticed the water was going under the structure. So not only did we have disintegrating boulders, we had the water actually flowing under the structure. So we had two major problems with it. And it was determined there was no other solution but to take the structure out. So um, we removed the structure carefully, left-handed, an amazing job of, you can see how tight it is in there. They removed the structure carefully without any problems. And this is with the installed sheet pile cutoff all in place. Um, this particular structure is sloped. You can see that it kind of contours to the ground. There's different types of grouted structures, but this happens to be a sloped, grouted uh, boulder drop structure. <coughs> the second thing we do after we have driven that sheep pile is we put in the two rows of boulders that determine the crest elevation. We want to keep the crest elevation exactly the way the original project was. We don't want to change engineering. This is a 100-year drop structure. So we really take our time to make sure that the crest elevation is correct. And if you'll notice, the sheet pile is a little lower than the boulders themselves, and that's all encased in grout, a monolithic pour, so that we get that really sealed at the upstream edge of the structure itself. Um, this is the first structure completed. As soon as we got it completed, we got a, a flow, a pretty good storm. And what I wanted to point out here is um, how well the water flows between the boulders and the flow in these condition, and it dissipates the energy. It, it, it's, it's the way it should be built. And it really takes a lot of ex expertise in the person setting the boulders to get that right. Um, we finished the upstream structure. Um, and this is an aerial photo. There's two other structures below it. Um, and as we're finishing the structure, the upstream structure, Jay comes to me and he says, these two downstream, the boulders look good, the grout looks good, but the water's flowing underneath the structure. So do you want us to fix them while we're here? Well, Daniel from Lowen um, really did an amazing job of getting it engineered quickly, got it permitted through ERO. Uh, Aaron Cubley handled that of it. Um, Parker worked with us to get this all the residents involved. Um, so we went ahead and uh, repaired the <coughs> two downstream structures. This is a third and the lower structure, and you can see there's an existing cut, concrete cutoff wall 
Uh, and once we chipped it away, there was a large cavity under the structure where the water had washed away the subgrade. So the first step we did is we filled that cavity with grout. And then you can see the new sheet pile is already in place. And then uh, we put the boulders and grout it in. And this is a finished product. Uh, you can see how little disturbance this is compared to the first structure. So this was a very economical way to go. Um, the middle structure had the same problem, and this is a finished product. Uh, again, driven sheet pile, two rows of boulders. Make sure your crest elevation is correct, grouted in place, and you can see the water is flowing over the top of it as it should be. Um, I want to, at this point, stop for a second on these projects and say I've been advocating for sheet pile cutoff walls for a couple decades, and my question came is, is it right? Are we doing it correctly? Is there a pile? If you go back 20, 20 years, this is a pile of rubble. You know, what, what, is it working? Is it, is it functioning? So these next two projects, I, I went back to some ones we did a long time ago. And the first one is Big Dry Creek at Decoven Park. This was 2002. This is 22 years ago. And this was two weeks ago, uh, the photo in, you're looking at. And you can see the downstream section is stable. Um, it, it really looks good from the downstream part of it. Um, Sellers and Greg um, uh, did the design. Peter Nelson um, did an amazing job on engineering. And what this project started out to be was a sewer project. The sanitary sewer was a 33-inch concrete pipe that was laying in the creek with the water flowing underneath of it. So people were very concerned about the environmental damage that could happen if that broke. So um, Peter did an, um, this design. Uh, Kempen Hoffman uh, was a contractor. And what we first did was encase the sewer to protect it. And then we drove sheet pile upstream of it. And we en encased it and, and connected those with concrete and rebar and then built the downstream drop structure. Um, this is, again, two weeks ago. You can see the encasement there. Uh, that has a sewer in it and a sheet pile, and it drops uh, to the right of that. Um, this is, again, two weeks ago. I wanted to point out that the crest elevation of how the water flows across the drop as it should and dissipate the energy, uh, this is a short video to show how well it's working. So that project's holding up. It's couple decades old. Um, it looks as good as, well, it looks better than when we finished because of revegetation's in place and it's stable. Um, moving on to Greenwood Gulch at um, the Highline Canal. This project was done in 2004, so two years later. Um, at that time, Greenwood Village did not have a lot, of, a lot of money available in their maintenance program. So they didn't want us to take the whole structure out. They said, can you fix it? Because if, if you see from the picture, the water upstream is flowing through the drop structure. It's not flowing over the structure. So um, we came in again, Kemp and Hoffman, one of our older contractors. Um, we exposed the area. You can see the guy with the shovel. He, it's actually going through this, uh, the concrete cutoff wall. So it was flowing through the structure. We took sheet pile PZ-22 and drove it all from one abutment all the way around in a half circle, creating that wall of steel to, so it won't seep, and we cut the notch back out. Um, we grouted it all, so it's all one big mass. And um, as you can see, this is again a couple weeks ago, the water's flowing over the top of it, not through the structure as it should. Um, this is a little farther uh, view of it, and we did not, take the structure out. So that's not our work. That was a developer's work, but we did get it functioning and working correctly. And it's holding up. It's over two decades old. Um, the last project I'd like to talk about is up to now, there's these large boulder structures. Um, there, there's a lot going on there. And you can do the same thing in a smaller area. And this happens to be Newland Gulch at Heirloom Park. Uh, Town of Parker. Uh, thank you, Michael Krabjek. Um, Jacobs Engineering, Aaron Cook was our designer. Uh, left hand did the heavy lifting, Arrowhead made it green again. Um, so I wanted to point out that, and we had a lot of territory, so we didn't have to, we weren't crunched, so we were able to spread out what was about eight feet of drop through six different structures. There were a foot and a half to two foot drops. So um, again, 
boulder grouted drop structure with sheet pile cutoff. And the important part here is, is that the crest elevation, we have to maintain it. So we set those boulders to get the crest, and then again, we grout it in mass and, and, and make it solid. Um, this is two seasons later um, of one of the drops. It's looking good. Uh, just a series of pictures of the different drops. Uh, they fit in, uh, you can barely tell they're there. Um, and in this photo, I wanna show how the water, again, grouted boulder drop structure with sheep pile cut off. And you can see the way the water dissipates across the drop, which it should. And um, it's really working quite well. Uh, so they don't have to be large, huge structures. They can be small. Um, but that's what we're trying to achieve in our projects, a natural look. And um, I think we're doing a pretty good job on, on these structures. Thank you.